Dunluce Castle is a beautiful, isolated, windswept, rain-lashed ruin of a 12th century castle, halfway between Bush Mills and Portrush. McQuillan, the Lord of Dunluce, powerful man. He ruled over Dunluce village, Dunluce estate. The castle was his, a strategically important castle. And he was a widower. His wife had passed away and he had raised his daughter by himself and he loved her. He was devoted to her and he only wanted the best for her. And she, well, she was such a generous and kindly girl. She walked through the estate helping people when she could. She, she brought food to people who were hungry. She helped out the poor. And every day as she went around, people just fell in love with her. And one day, a particular young man really fell in love with her. And his name was Reginald. The two young people fell deeply in love. Her father had different plans for her because being an important chieftain, he had arranged a marriage for his daughter whose name was Maeve Rowe McQuillan. And he was going to marry her to a clansman of his. In fact, she was a cousin of Maeve Rowe. The betrothal was set. When the father spoke to his daughter and told her what was to come, she was beside herself. She said, I can't. I won't marry a man I don't know and a man I don't love. I've, I've got a man. I, I want to marry my man, Reginald. And her father said, who's this Reginald? And he sent servants to make investigations to find out who the person was. When the news came back to him that Reginald was in fact an O'Cahan, the father was furious. The O'Cahans were enemies of his family. And he insisted, no, you can't marry him. That's not two families I'm trying to bring together. I want you marrying Rory Og McQuillan. She refused. Her father did what sometimes fathers foolishly do, and he locked her in her room, high in a tower near the back of the castle. She stayed there. The servants were forbidden to, from talking to her, except for one who brought her food each day and slid it through a grill in the door. She stayed in that room and that servant brought her her needles and her wool and she sat there all day knitting a white garment and the garment grew longer and longer each day. Her father went to her door after several days, knocked the door and said, well girl, have you changed your mind? And she said, no, I have not. And he said, I see you're making a dress there. Is that a wedding dress? She said, it is not, it's my shroud. After several weeks of being locked up like, like this, the servant who visited her each day brought news to her father that she was fading away. She'd lost weight, her skin was ghostly white, and she did nothing each day but knit. The father said, I don't want my daughter to die. His heart softened. He decided he had to find a way out of this for her. So what he did was, he spoke to the servant and he said, tell my daughter, that tonight I will be out of the castle, I won't be home, and leave the door open, and that it's an opportunity for her to escape, and arrange with her and her young man that they, they can run away together, because I would rather have my daughter go away and marry someone I don't want her to, than have her die. And that's what happened. The servant went to her room that night, told her, your father's not here, you can leave, opened the door, and she left, and she climbed down the cliffside to the mermaid's cave, huge cave down at the shoreline just below the castle. And there with a small boat, Reginald was waiting. The, the young couple climbed into the boat and Reginald pulled out from the shore. The father meanwhile was in the castle. He had crept up to the room where she had been in prison and looking from the window, he could see them leave in this tiny boat but it was such a stormy night. Wind lashed them in their faces. The rain was coming sideways and stinging flames of rain at their faces. And they were really struggling to keep the boat even heading in the direction that they were steering. Water rushed over the side. The boat began to fill up. The father realized that they were escaping in one of the worst storms he'd ever seen. He ran from the castle he ran down the path to the cliffside and he went to the shore 
hoping to encourage them or help them to come back again. But the tide had caught them by now. The boat was rocking violently from side to side. He could just see a glimpse as it rose up of his daughter in the long white dress which she had made in captivity. He beckoned to them. He called. He asked the servants could they help, but nobody could help. The boat was pulled under. The waves pulled the young people to the bottom and they were never seen again. Now the father walked the shoreline each evening. Many years later, he was on the shore as usual in the evening, scanning the horizon for some sign that his daughter had survived. And he saw a light from the castle above and he looked up and there was a candle in the window and he strained his eyes to look. And there at the window was the face of his own daughter, Maeve Rowe of Dunluce. Now, visitors to the castle today report seeing things like the room where she stayed is always swept completely clean. There's the story of the time the castle kitchens broke away from the castle and fell into the sea. Nine people lost their lives and only one person in the room survived, a young boy, an apprentice to the cobbler. He'd been mending shoes there and just at the moment that the floor started to tear asunder and the walls fell away into the sea, he describes two powerful hands coming from the night and pushing him bodily in his chest and throwing him back against the wall and while nine people fell to their deaths he was saved. He claimed that it was Maeve Rowe of Dunluce who has become known as the Banshee of Dunluce. Today there's a small gift shop at Dunluce and the staff report strange happenings Books come off the shelves of their own accord. Doors open and close. Lights turn on and off and cold spots appear in certain places. So if you get a chance, go and have a look at Dunluce Castle. But keep your eye out for Maeve Rowe. She walks the floors of that castle still. <laughs>